It's October, and we're bringing you no tricks, just the greatest treat of all, the truth. Welcome everyone, I'm Cameron Coleman, and this is 7 on 7, bringing you VNN's top seven stories from around the globe. Kicking off today's news, Despite being securely locked away and following the horrific charges against her, Stormfront's words seem to resonate with a surprisingly large group of Americans. Furthering this report, a group of loyalists calling themselves the Storm Chasers have recently stepped forward, pledging to help keep fighting for Stormfront's vision of the future. While the group has remained relatively peaceful, the heavily armed Storm Chasers continue to exercise their constitutional right of free speech, demanding that Stormfront's whereabouts be made public. But despite the group's loud and boisterous claims, VOD executives are keeping quiet for now. Last week, an excited Oceanland crowd was given a rare treat as The Deep made a special public appearance to welcome the park's newest family member, a baby bottlenose dolphin named Dinky, who was gifted to the park by the Saving Our Seas Aquatic Animal Foundation, sponsored by VOD International. Hopefully, the charismatic ocean mammal helps to fill the void left behind from the tragic death of Oceanland's previous lead dolphin attraction just a couple of years ago. Meanwhile, over in the financial world, VOD International's stock prices continue to grow following its acquisition of Heaven's Harvest, the beloved Christian-owned organic farm-to-shelf grocery store chain. Both Wall Street and VOT shareholders have responded favorably to this week's announcement, as the news seems to be producing great results for investors. Speaking of values, America's super sweetheart Starlight returned to her old costume recently, bringing wholesome American values back to the forefront of her public persona. Just in time for Halloween, Starlight's classic costume is quickly becoming this year's favorite go-to costume for girls, surpassing Queen Maeve and quickly approaching Homelander-level sales numbers. Supply clearly isn't meeting the demand, as stores are rapidly running out of stock, with unopened packages selling for as much as $200 on V-Bay. After the break, is the FBSA overstretching their authority? Some think so. Stay tuned to hear our thoughts. Hey there, I'm The Deep. And while I'm privileged to be one of the world's greatest superheroes, I'm even more privileged today to announce my new title as Chief Sustainability Associate at Liquid Death Mountain Water. Scientists, and most of the dolphins I've talked to, say that by 2050, plastic pollution will outweigh fish life pound for pound in our oceans. And that's why Liquid Death is pure mountain water. It comes in aluminum cans, because they're infinitely recyclable. You can 10% uh, of all profits go to help ocean plastic cleanup. It's pretty cool. We can all be heroes by declaring death to plastic. <laughs> but it burns when I breathe. <laughs> it's refreshing to do good, so please, <laughs> keep our oceans beautiful. Electricity-powered hero Livewire helped ensure this year's Halloween will be a lot safer for trick-or-treaters in Madison, Wisconsin, after busting an underground drug smuggling ring that was using children's candy to traffic illegal methamphetamines around the Midwest. Livewire's lightning-fast efforts definitely saved the day, as nearly 300 pounds of contaminated Sour Soup's candy were confiscated, which he saw were promptly, properly, and safely disposed of at a nearby Vought chemical facility before heading to his All Treats, No Tricks event heroically making a stand against cancel culture's outlandish war on Halloween. Reports of a homicidal hitchhiker continue to pour in from the tri-state area. A sketch of the suspect has been released based on eyewitness accounts. Authorities are advising to immediately report any sightings and to avoid any contact with this person, as they are wanted in connection with several violent crimes. Vought has offered the Seven's assistance in bringing this violent criminal to justice, with Black Noir volunteering to deal with the situation as quickly, and obviously as quietly, as possible. Luckily, I don't think Black Noir can be anything other than quiet. Capping off today's program. Ezekiel, the charismatic face of Samaritan's Embrace, has become the latest victim of the FBSA. True, the evangelical entrepreneur may be bending the rules a bit with his 501c status, but how is charging someone with multiple counts of abuse and misconduct solely based on anonymous sources even legal? 
Spoiler alert, it isn't. The FBSA is nothing but a highly funded government campaign against the superhuman community designed to unconstitutionally target and take down the hardworking heroes who give everything for this nation. Unfortunately, despite all that they do for us, they continue to be mercilessly attacked by people like vicious Victoria Newman and her soup-hating lapdog, Hugh Campbell. Unbelievable. I'm sorry, I don't even want to report on this anymore. And I'll leave you with that for now, which is something for all of us to think about. Do your part, be American. So, until next time, this is VNN's Cameron Coleman, and from me and everyone here at Vought Tower, keep seeking the truth and stay true to the red, white, and blue. And I'll see you next time.